What up, Blackish fam? I hope all is well in your corner of the world. Man, I'm really excited about this Coast Contra, man. They're bringing hip-hop back, bro. For someone like me, I'm an 80s baby, right? Well, I was born in the 80s, kind of raised in the 90s. I was born in 82. I'm 40 years old. Uh, but man, it's been a minute since I've heard someone that's got me excited about hip-hop. I actually took a few years off hip-hop because it was so, so much garbage in the game. Uh, but it's really good to come across a group that's not just spitting facts, but uh, just bringing some knowledge back into the game. If you knew old school hip hop, you knew it wasn't just rocking the riding the, the beat. It was also spitting knowledge for your community. So uh, really excited to check out some more Coast Contra. Someone in the comments section uh, said, if you, you want to get into more of their music, not just their freestyles, uh, check out uh, Pimpin' Benjamin. No idea what this is. I think it's a little bit older than their uh, freestyles, but uh, got it queued up. Let's take a look. Let's get into it. Let's do a, a good breakdown with it. We're going to be breaking down. Uh, again, if you're looking to listen to their music, this might not be the best channel for you. We do an intense breakdown of the lyrics in depth. Uh, I want to understand the context of what they're saying, especially with a crew like this where they're spitting so much knowledge they're trying to get that out into the community. It's important that you have uh, modern day griots, right? That can actually take that information and spread it uh, throughout the community. Man, let's get right into it. Ooh, you can get with the came in right with that. Uh, What's that? Um, you can get with this, so you can get with that. That's old school. That's um, Black Sheep. Uh, old school Black Sheep, the choice is yours. Uh, speaking of old school hip-hop, right? Uh, man, definitely a song that we should get into here, but let's uh, let it ride. Benjamin gon' pimp, or you gon' pimp him back. Now if you get with this, my man gon' tell you that. You rather flip bricks or rather flip houses? You wanna fuck this, my man gon' tell you that. You rather flip bricks or rather flip houses? You wanna fuck this? Okay, so they're talking about choices. Like Black Sheep said, the choice is yours, right? He said Benjamin gonna pimp, right? When you think about Benjamins, you think of money, right? It's all about the Benjamins, baby, right? Um, so he's saying, uh, I think I caught what he said, you can flip bricks or you can flip houses, right? Um, you know, uh, again, the choice is y yours. Uh, you, you're really, uh, you know, like let's, let's say you're, you're losing weight or you're trying to go over some goal, right? It, it's simply about making better choices, right? It's all sales. You just got to choose your product. Let's let it ride. Oh, you can get with that. Benjamin gon' pimp. Oh, you gon' pimp him back. Now, if you get with this, my man gon' tell you that. You rather flip bricks or rather flip houses? You wanna fuck hoes and nigga pimp dollars? My nigga, I'm yes. Goose. You can keep the pride of see when it's black money. We so close minded. Ooh. Man, he said so much already, right? Uh, again, you can flip bricks or you can flip houses. How much does it cost to get in the coke game, right? What is uh what is uh uh do from clip say? Uh five G's, anything less is just a goddamn shame, right? So you're gonna put five G's into buying or getting coke, or maybe some people flip weed, right? I'm I'm from Chicago, I don't know all this, but I know all this, right? Uh you you, you flip weed, little dimes and nicks until you get to ounces and whatnot and QPs. But when you want to make some real money, you take that money and you put it in the Coke. Because the Coke game, the money comes much quicker, but much higher consequences as well. What he's saying is, man, scrap all that. Scrap that mentality, right? If you can get a few thousand dollars, you can get a business going. I legit had a business that uh, was doing over a million dollars in revenue that we started with almost nothing. There's so many apps and programs out that uh, make it so so much easier and uh you know let me know if you guys are really interested in side hustles and making money uh i could show you some things that uh i learned over the years but it, very true and i put i try to put my own kids and teenagers on this uh type of game you know he said you want to fuck hoes or or uh you want to you want to pimp dollars right I, I learned something i wish i learned it earlier in life but you you lose a lot of money chasing women but you'll never lose women chasing money. They're always going to come, right? Let's let it ride. I love what he's about to say about Gucci and Prada, right? Did you hear what he said? 
uh, he was saying uh, something about being closed minded, but using clothes, uh, Gucci and Prada, which of course have had their share of uh, controversies recently. Let's run right in front of the back, man. This is a nice little beat, too. Spent the government quick. Let me get you fast. You can get with this or you can get with that. Black sheep. Pimp that money. My man go to you that. You rather flip bricks or rather flip houses. You want to fuck hoes and nigga pimp dollars. My nigga, I'm Gucci. You can keep the pride of see when it's black money. We so close minded. Look at our mindset. Let's redesign it. Let me rewind it. Evolve to Ooh, let me rewind it just like I did there. But yo. Uh, let's let's first get to the wordplay, right? He said, "I'm Gucci in the hood, right? That just means I'm good, right? I'm I'm, I'm Gucci, bro. Uh, most people don't say that anymore, especially since uh, especially out here. I'm, I moved out of Chicago. I mean, some of these suburban like dental offices. I've heard a lady say, "You Gucci?" I'm like, "Bitch," <laughs> right? But the wordplay, Gucci, meaning I'm straight. He said, "You can keep the Prada, which is another luxury." brand uh which is just playing off the, the gucci wordplay right gucci and prada luxury luxury band brands but gucci playing off on cool right um let me also you know we're talking about spitting knowledge and spreading knowledge to the hud but uh, i don't know if a lot of you guys know this but when the black lives matter movement began a lot of brands try to show uh, solidarity if you would uh, by posting a black square. I don't know if you guys remember that, right? You could post a black square on your so social media page. And it was like a kind of a me too, hashtag me too moment. Because, uh, man, they got a lot of feedback. You know, like who remembers the Gucci blackface sweater? It was like a Gucci blackface turtleneck. And you pull the turtleneck up and there's big ass red lips on that motherfucker. Like, ah, oh, that's how y'all think about how these companies see you guys, right? And think about, you know, as me, I'm a minority man, right? My mom considers herself black. Uh, my dad, who wasn't really in my life, is Mexican. So I'm multiracial. Uh, you have to think about what these, how these companies think about us. And a lot of it comes out with their marketing, right? Uh, there's been a lot of luxury brands that, you know, they, they release bigoted or at the very least insensitive items. Um, and, and, you know, it's, uh, you think about this. We had... Uh, was a Dolce and Gabbana, right? They put out a campaign, uh, basically stereotyping Asian people, and then that one of their top designers said that Chinese people were ignorant, dirty, smelling mafia or something, right? You guys remember that? Um, well, Prada, they had a bunch of caricatures that were uh, basically in blackface. Um, again, Gucci had the ski mask with the turtleneck with the rub, uh, red lips. Um, there was a, a blackface cartoons that were all over this, uh, uh, what was that, Montclair, I believe. Uh, H&M had the black boy modeling, right? And the t-shirt said the coolest monkey in the jungle. I'm not making this up, man. You guys could Google this, right? And I think it comes down to us as uh, the black community, or even we could go as far as just the minority community. We fail to mobilize when it counts, Right, we're constantly propping up these companies for uh, these these companies for what clout, uh, and you think about that, and you know one thing I always uh, I always think of is uh, you know do you guys remember when uh, Tommy Hilfiger he was on the Oprah Winfrey show and there was a, a huge uh, backlash over uh, he said that he didn't make his clothes for minorities right uh, which everybody was rocking Tommy Hilfiger in the nineties. Uh, and all of a sudden, that label started to drop, right? We have to understand the power uh, of the money in our community. But again, I don't know that a lot of people will, will stop wearing certain designers um, because we, we live in a society where it, it, you're, you, people thrive off status and validation. Um, but you know what happened when uh, uh, with the Asian community, right? Uh, when that uh, Dolce & Gabbana campaign, Asian people started pulling out of deals that they had, factories that were making their merchandise. But unfortunately, in the black community, that's not something we do, right? You still got some of the best artists on these award shows. Oh, what are you wearing? Oh, Gucci, right? A lot of rappers, uh, you know, I've already said a lot on this, but uh, uh, that's what he's referring to in this. Money, we so close-minded. Look at close -minded. our minds, let me design it. Let me rewind it, evolve to different things to need. We is problem, trust. 
trust we got in, so trust, I'm a proud money, we so close-minded. Look at our mindset, let's redesign it, let me rewind it, evolve to different things to need, we is problem. Trust we got in, so trust, I'm a prophet. Trust, it, right, the wordplay with profit, right? Uh, a prophet is somebody that's uh, in, uh, regarded as a, a teacher, right? Um, someone uh, uh, was, uh, uh, teaching the word of God, but also financial profit, right? Let it ride. Need, we is problem. Trust we got in, so trust I'm a prophet. Kicking knowledge, I'm sincerely paying homage. Move godly think. Paying, right? It's still coming off talking about profit. to different things to need. Trust we got in, so trust I'm a prophet. Kicking knowledge, I'm sincerely paying homage. Move godly, think godly. You can't confine me. They play for checks. I play oh, and then right there, he says, move godly, think God, uh, Gandhi, right? So he's still coming off the trust in God. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously move godly, he's thinking of uh, Gandhi and playing that off God. Just sick wordplay. Problem, trust we got in, so trust I'm a prophet. Kicking knowledge, I'm sincerely paying, paying homage. homage. Move godly, think Gandhi, you can't confine me. Ooh. They play for checks, I play chess, you can't pawn me. Ooh. Bro, you uh, what they play for checks, right? Uh, checks like they're they're paying, they're in it for the money, right? But I play chess, where he's also playing off checks, which could be considered checkers. Uh, but you can't pawn me, as in uh, chess, right? If you guys don't know, in chess, the pawn is the uh, it's the most numerous, but also the weakest piece in the game of chess. Um, but he's playing that off. You can't confine me. Sick. I'm sincerely paying homage. Move godly. Thank Gandhi. You can't confine me. They play for checks. I play chess. You can't pawn me. Sip and sake with Kiwasaki. I'm picking property. Mm. I play seeds for money. Sake is just Japanese wine, uh, technically. But listen to what he said. He said, sipping sake with Kiyosaki while picking property. Right? He's talking about the, the mindset of somebody who wants to make money. Um, who is Kiyosaki? That's uh, he's referring to uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, which is uh, he had the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, uh, where he talks about a lot of these things and uh, how you can make money in the game, uh, what the the mindset you have to have to make money in the game. Um, but kind of funny thing, he's also playing off the board games, right? Because he talked about uh, they play for checks. I play chess. You can't palm. Pawn me. Well, Robert Kiyosaki, he also has a board game. Um, the board game, uh, I think it's called Cash Flow, um, but it teaches you about money management, uh, which also integrates with the board game flow, right? The chess and checkers and whatnot. Let it ride. Come on, we're going deep in this. Can't homage, move godly, think Gandhi, you can't confine me. They play for checks, I play chess, you can't pawn me. Sip and sake with Kiyosaki, I'm picking Pick a property. property. I plant seeds for money trees. I'm teaching botany, right? Of course, there's physically planting trees, old Lorax face, right? To create flowers or whatnot. But he also discussed uh, uh, teaching, right? Uh, teaching uh, a botany, which is the, uh, it's the scientific study of plants, right? Their physiology, their structure, genetics, um, but also planting an idea or a strategy to benefit in the future, right? He's planting strategy to get a money tree or that return on his investment. Fact, they trees, I'm Sick. teaching botany. Remember back when they took rap, play Monopoly. Made copies, they sell these souls for hollow cars. How can we not see the real world Bro. intellectual property, hey. nigga? Look, look at what he said, the wordplay there, right? He said uh, something about... Uh, they took rap. They played Monopoly, right? He's also playing off the board games, the chess, the checkers, uh, the game, the cash flow game from uh, Robert Kiyosaki, right? But he's saying they took rap and they played Monopoly, but not just the board game. Uh, when you think about uh, uh, fr from an economic uh, standpoint, right? Um, Monopoly in economics is uh, really a single seller. You take a, a unique product or uh, in a monopoly market, um, there's no competition, right? There's no close substitute. So someone can dominate the game. Most monopolies are technically not legal, but I guess it depends on your industry. Um, but that would be like all uh, T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, um, all uh, 
joining forces and being a one cell phone company. So you didn't have options, right? Well, you can't do that. That would be a monopoly. But again, the wordplay off the board game, sick with it. And he said something about copies. I got to uh, go back, but I think he's talking about making copies of the same type of artist, right? They took trap, made copies. Ugh. Barry said, speak facts. Uh, they took trap, made copies, right? They took trap music and they made copies of all those artists so they sound the same. The same thing they do with like ATL Saudi, right? They, they take a southern artist, make them all sound the same. They take East Coast rap, make it sound the same. They, they, they own these different uh, uh, genres. But what happens when you make everything sound the same, you kind of have a monopoly on that type of music or that uh, genre. Just sick, man. Took trap, made copies. They sell his soul for holocaust. How can we not see the real mm. intellectual... Bro, to play off, they, uh, they sell souls for holocaust, right? Um, but holocaust. The holocaust, just by definition, it just means the destruction or slaughter on a mass scale. Um, there could be some wordplay there with the hollow cost, H-O-L-L-O-W, right? Um, but uh, just the, the wordplay. Made copies, they sell his soul for hollow cost. How can we not see the real wealth is intellectual property? Bro, did he just say, how do we not see? They sell his soul for hollow cost. How can we not see the... How can we not see, right? But not see. Bro, the, the, the holocaust... I think most people would know this, but the Holocaust was basically, it, it's a genocide, right? This was uh, the genocide of European Jews during World War II. Um, so you're talking about 1941 to 1945. Um, Nazi Germany um, and a variety of different collaborators uh, systematically murdered over 6 million Jews. Um, this is across like German-occupied Europe. Um, at the time, this was about two-thirds of Europe's Jewish population. Uh, right, the Holocaust is something that's very real, um, and of course the Nazis uh, played a big part in that. But he's the wordplay with Nazi is just sick, just excellent writing. For money trees, I'm teaching botany. Remember back when they took rap, played Monopoly, speak facts, they took trap, Tra made copies. Who? Oh, intellect is hey, bro. He's dropping uh, knowledge here, right? What is it? The real wealth is intellectual property, right? What is intellectual property? That's, um, it's work or like an invention, um, the result of creativity. Um, it's, it's something like a, a manuscript, right? Or a design where you own the rights and you can apply for a patent, a trademark, a copyright, right? Uh, I, I, would, I would take it a little bit further. The real wealth is intellectual property, um, but it's also something that somebody can't take from you, like education as well and experience. They took trap, made copies. They sell his soul for hollow cars. How can we not see the real wealth is intellectual property? Hey, nigga, I learned the etiquette, Pippin duck in the delicate mistakes. Had to double up my dollar like Jefferson off the face. Probably Ooh. had to double. What do you say? Had to double up my dollar like Jefferson off the face. Uh, the former U.S. President Thomas Jefferson is on a $2 bill. So if he's doubling his dollar, he now has $2. And a $2 bill will have Thomas Jefferson on it. Woo! The wordplay. Big risk, big reward. Bro, he just do you question what it costs or what it makes? Bro, that's that's something that I learned in my 20s that is probably the biggest hurdle. What starts hailing outside or something. But man, I wish I, I learned this uh much earlier in life. And you can tell a lot about someone's mindset. Listen to what he says again. Do you play the win or do you play it safe? Depends. Do you question Do you what question it what it costs or what it takes, right? Money is cash flow. Uh, for instance, a few years ago, back in 2017, I bought an investment property in Chicago. I negotiated a deal. That building cost me $55,000 to purchase. 
I'm going to sell it later this year for $300,000. Even if I take a somewhat of a loss, it'll be $275,000. Uh, 260. I might buy it at 250 if I'm feeling thirsty or wanting to get to my next uh, adventure. But I bought that building for $55,000, right? So did that building cost me $55,000 or did it require $55,000 in capital to produce a $300,000 return, right? You have to make sure you're asking the right questions and make sure that your money works for you. Right. If uh, like if you own a, a YouTube channel, right, and you're paying uh, for YouTube uh, pay per click, right, is and it costs a thousand dollars a month, and your wife might walk. I shouldn't say wife because that's a uh, you know. Well, let's say someone comes up and like, damn, bro, you paying a thousand dollars a month for your YouTube presence? Well, no, bro. That thousand dollars a month might be bringing in ten thousand new people which in return gets you an extra $3,000 a month in revenue produced by YouTube. So $1,000 to get $3,000. There's a difference. You're not just spending $1,000. You're, you're, you're investing $1,000 because the return is worth it, right? Yeah, calculated risk, bro. Come on now. He's dropping knowledge. Dipping, ducking the delicate mistakes. Had to double up my dollar like Jefferson off the face. Ugh. Play the win or do you play it safe? Depends. Do you question what it costs or what it make? Ain't bro till you think with limits. You rich, you and bail. Not to yes. make the pitch. Know the difference, right? You ever, anybody ever teach you the difference between being broke and being poor? Right? That's what he's talking about. You ain't broke until you think with limits. The rich are, they don't think like that. They don't think about, ah, oh, I got to spend $1,000 on this. No, they think about the return that that money will make them, Right? Uh, but you're not poor. Most people that don't have money, you're not poor. You're just broke. You just don't have money yet, right? It's a temporary situation, and you have to approach your life like that. If you keep saying, I'm poor, you're never going to have anything, and you're just going to be in this cycle, right? You perpetuate the cycle of going to currency exchanges and uh, spending more for the things that you want, uh, just like having bad credit, right? It takes somebody who's you need to expand your, you need to think more about it, right? Being poor costs a lot of money. You're paying more for everything in your world. So what it make? Ain't broke till you think with limits. You rich, you in bail. Not to mention, but chasing the pension is out of style. Bro. Not an interest on a digit compound. That's how you flip it, huh? We talk metaphysics. Bro, he's just dropping so much. I could stop every line and we, we got it, right? We're not here to listen to the song. We can let it ride after. We're here to break down what he's talking about here. And uh, we're going to break down what he's saying. Because he said not to mention, but a pension is out of style, so right? Ain't broke till you think with limits. You rich, you in bail. Not to mention, but chasing the pension is out of style. Yo, that's the new flex, right? That's an, a, a pension is an old way of making money. And for those that don't know, uh, right, Congress, uh, basically, they, they were determined to create additional options to shift funding away from uh, pension plans. And they came up with the 401k, right? The 401k, it basically is an, it allows companies to have an alternative uh, to pension plans where they're no longer responsible for paying their retired employees, right? But there's a downside, uh, with pensions, you, you have extremely strict withdrawal and transfer rules, and most people can't access their pension until retirement age. And you have to ask yourself, you know, as a black man, what is the likelihood that I'm going to get to 70, 75? We lose a lot of people in our community to simple cholesterol, right? Um, but, you know, you have to kind of weigh that. Um, you know, can you be doing something else with your money to generate more money, right? Uh, the old flex is the the pension, just like the old flex is having a big house and a big car. Now you look a little stupid if you got, if you're working at Walmart, but you got the big old Cadillac Escalade, right? We all know you're paying over $1,200 a month over a G a month uh, for what, Right. Uh, the, the, the new flex is having freedom that money brings, right? Waking up and being able to do whatever you want every day, right? Right now, it is, uh, it's, it's before 11 a.m. my time. This is a day or two after Valentine's Day. And I'm sitting in the house and I'm making YouTube videos. 
right? That's a flex on itself, right? I don't have to get up and go commute and go work for someone because now I started uh, having my money work more for me. Um, and again, I could put together a video, no, no workshop, no, just how you do it, right? Here's the tools. Here's the, here's what I'm doing. And it's generating X, Y, Z per month. Yo, each one teach one, right? Let's go. Hey bro, till you think we're limit, you rich, you and bail. Not to mention, but chasing the pitch and it's out of style. Wow. Had an inch for getting digits, bitches gave me the run around. Not an inch is on a digit compound, exquisite. <laughs> That's how you flip it, huh? We talk that mm. when you Ooh, I almost didn't catch that, right? What'd he say? He had had an interest. What'd he say? Had an interest for getting digits. Had an inch for getting digits. Had an inch. Yeah, had an interest for getting digits. Back in the day, we used to have that game, right? We used to go approach a girl and try to get those digits. You're getting her phone number. Um, but he had an interest in getting digits. Bitches were giving him the runaround. And what did he say after that? He said, now the interest is on the digits. It sounds like he's talking about co compound interest. Mention, but chasing the pitch and it's out of style. Had an interest in getting digits in the run around. Not an interest on the digit compound. Ooh! <laughs> oh, he said that's how you flip it. Yeah. No, so, what is compound interest, right? Compound interest is interest on savings, but it calculates both the initial principal and the accumulated interest from previous periods, right? That's like interest on interest. Um, that's the power of compound interest, right? Um, it, 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 it's going to make your money grow a lot faster than what they call simple interest, which is only calculated on the original or principal amount. Um, you know, that's that's how you get, use your money to make more money. Um, he said that's how you flip it, huh? Uh, that's how you flip it, but there's also wordplay there because he's talking about... Uh, um, you know, these, these little hustles, right? And uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that Robert uh, Kiyosaki. Um, the, but there's the wordplay on flipping, just like I was talking about flipping a house, right? Just like you flip bricks, you can flip houses, you can flip metals, you can flip cars. Uh, there's so many other things. Everything, if you look around you, came from somewhere with a middleman. People are making money all around you. Come on now. Passing the pitch and it's out of style. Had an inch for getting digits. Bitches gave me the run around. Not an inch is on a digit compound. Exquisite. <laughs> That's how you flip it, huh? We talk metaphysics. When you move a silent, you don't move the money liquid. Bro, that's going over everyone's head. I don't, I, man, I don't care what you tell me. I don't, I don't think there's a lot of breaker, uh, uh, people that are breaking down lyrics that are going to catch that. He said, we talk metaphysics, right? What's metaphysics? It's a, it's a branch of philosophy, but it deals with the principles of things, including what we, we would call abstract concepts, like knowing or substance or time and space. Um, but he used it in some wordplay because he said, moving solid, but you don't move the money liquid, right? Uh, liquid money is like uh, cash. It's, it's cash money, legal tender, right? So... When you're liquid, you have it in your account to spend or settle what they call liability. So, like for instance, right, you buy a house, you 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 invested a hundred thousand dollars, and you have uh, now that building is worth four hundred thousand. Yeah, you might say this is part of your net worth, but you're not liquid because to get that cash, you have to sell that property, right? Or like a lot of people experience this with uh, what was that uh, the stock in. Uh, What's the gaming place? I forget about it. Uh, uh, but GameStop, right? And a lot of people were millionaires on paper. Um, but does it really matter if you can't cash out, right? Um, but, yo, that's an awesome wordplay. It's talking about metaphysics moving from solid uh, to liquid. But he's talking about uh, financially. Just sick wordplay. Not an Let it rap. Digit compound, exquisite. <laughs> that's how you flip it, huh? We talk metaphysics. When you move a silent, you don't move the money liquid. Implement a vision, bitch. Speak it to existence. Manifest. And the rest is making good decisions, nigga. Yes. We pay custodians the best. Took a salt, hit the vault, clean it like it was a mess. Bro, the wordplay is sick. Because look what he's doing here, right? He said, implement a vision. Speak it to his existence. Uh, but what did, what did he say after that? He said something about custodians. When you move a silent, you don't move the money, money liquid. liquid. Implement a vision, bitch. Speak it to Manifest and the rest is making good decisions, nigga. Yes, we pay 
custodians. Right there. He said, nigga, yes, we pay custodians, right? And see, it goes for a mindset, right? You're like, why is he going to pay a janitor? What's the custodian got to do with this? Bro, uh, there's what's called a bank custodian, right? A, a, a bank custodian has physical possession of its client's financial assets. Uh, this could be cash, but it could be stock certificates, bonds, right? Any financial instrument. A bank custodian is responsible for safeguarding these types of this type of asset, if you would, right? It's not just a janitor, but he it, the wordplay is sick because he said, I hit the vault, clean it like it was a mess, but hit the vault talking about I rob it, right? Um, but like it was a mess because he's a custodian, a janitor that we might clean it up. Bro, the wordplay. When you move silent, you don't move the money liquid. Implement a vision, speak it to existence, manifest, and the rest is making good decisions, nigga, yes. Bro, such he's dropping so much knowledge here. And again, you have to have a little bit of a financial background or, you know, it's the benefit of being someone who breaks down lyrics like this and being a bit older um, because I understand some of these concepts that he's talking about. Uh, what did he say? He said the money looks stolen, where he's playing off uh, hitting the vault clean, right? Like a janitor playing off custodian. But he said the money looks stolen once the Roth turns golden, right? So you got so much money building up, it looks like you stole it. But where did that money come from? He's talking about a golden Roth. Um, this is a form of what's called an IRA. So there's what's called a Roth Gold IRA. Um, and it's it's really important to know about this type of stuff. It's a self-directed IRA that you can use to invest in a bunch of uh, tangible assets like art, antiques, uh, collectibles, uh, real estate, uh, precious metals, right? And you can use this using a Roth IRA. Again, a Roth Gold IRA. And then he, he said after that, you could keep it tax free. Something about the fuck the IRS. But yes, he's right. Uh, uh, with a uh, gold Roth IRA, there's no taxes due on withdrawals. Um, you, if you take a distribution before, I don't know, it's like 60 years old or something, there's a 10% penalty. But it's an excellent way of, uh, again, getting the money and making the money work for you. There's so much knowledge out there that's just outside of our community. Uh, you know, we get people that uh, grandma worked 50 years, 60 years at the plant making minimum wage and struggled and bought a house and got a car and established credit and try to do things right in the world, but doesn't have a will, <laughs> right? Or a living will, doesn't have a um, any estate planning in place. So what happens when grandma dies, Right. That building's going to go into something that they call probate. Um, but it's like, why why do this to ourselves? Why not create it where you can pass down anything that you own to the next generation? So they're not always starting from scratch, right? I grew up in the hood. I grew up in Chicago on Artesian and Potomac, Levitt and Evergreen, Humble Park area of Chicago. It was bad. Why? My grandma worked 50 years. My grandpa worked 50 years. My other grandparents hustled and struggled. Why did I start from scratch with nothing? Why did I know nothing about credit? Why did I have to climb up from the ground when my ancestors have been working their whole life so I wouldn't have to? It's because we didn't have good estate planning. We didn't know. Uh, you know, you think these the rich community, they're passing now money. They're using insurance plans and estate planning to make sure their next generation doesn't have to struggle as much. And it's something that's really lacking in our community. Man, I love that. This is probably uh, one of the best songs I heard from Coast Contra. Not just in wordplay, which is sick, but because they're bringing and spitting knowledge and bringing it to the community and bringing it to people like myself that can decipher and recite and, and translate this information. And man, it's just, it's sick, man. I got a, uh, this is definitely one of my favorites now. Let's let it ride. <laughs> Oh, like get money. Can't be cheap, flip 
money. <laughs> keep a hustle on the side like extra yams, right? He's talking about always keep a side hustle. Work your nine to five, but come home and do the six to ten, right? Uh, yo, and just a... I won't keep dropping real life experiences in this, but I did that, right? I was working for a company. Um, we were doing commercial web design and search engine optimization. This is before when it was in its infancy. Uh, but when I came home, I started playing around with little word templates, playing around with uh, different websites. And it was HTML back in the day. And what happened? Well, I started reaching out to companies and I can create their website for them and manage their website going forward. We ended up breaking off from the company we worked for and starting our own company. Within 36 months, we were doing a million in revenue. And I did this for about 10 years. So we got to the point where we had over 20 employees. Uh, and this was a side hustle, right? This is something I'm not a web designer, right? I'm just someone that understands the hustle and is technically a salesperson and can take that idea and grow it. So, you know, these side hustles. You can get a website, put yourself out there. Nowadays, there's so many free programs that you can use for marketing and uh, to get yourself out there and really build a name for yourself. What do you say? Intellectual property. Something someone can't take from you as well. Sick. Ooh. Describe my texture, smooth, right? The wordplay. Yo, that's what we're just talking about, right? Uh, nine to five doesn't honor your worth. Think about the trade off. You're basically telling someone that you'll give them your day for $20 an hour, right? And yo, know, it's 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 not that hard breaking off and working for yourself. Yeah, we need people to run the gas stations and work on cars and 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 work the nine to five. But remember, you're running the rat race. You're never gonna get rich off that. You're just going with the flow. Before you look up, you're gonna be twenty five. Before you look up, you're gonna be thirty five. You look up, you're forty five. By the time you have anything of value, you're too old to enjoy it. So just think about that trade-off. In this day and age, there's so many opportunities to make the equivalent or more money on your own without having to work a nine-to-five. Make the money, make the money for you. Yeah. Yo, the rat race, we were just talking about that. It's a way of life where people are just caught up in this competitive struggle for wealth or power, but they're doing nothing to gain wealth or power. They're going in, working nine to five, punching the clock, getting their two-week check, asking for a day off, asking to use their phone, sometimes asking to go to the bathroom. Yo, you're in a loop. You're like a, a mouse or a hamster on a wheel, right? It's an exhausting routine. You have to find the loophole. You have to find a way. Uh, and what did he say for that? Uh, he said for that something, you'll be up in the loop, right? Uh, the, the, what do you think the rich do, right? Think about Donald Trump and his taxes, right? There was this huge uproar. And he said, no, I didn't No, I didn't pay any taxes. I did what I could to avoid paying taxes. Now, that might not be illegal, but what did he say? He said, I, don't, I do what all you guys do. Yeah, the difference is with uh, your everyday person, they're trying to manipulate their taxes so they can get an extra G or two. He's trying to manipulate his taxes so he's not paying hundreds of thousands or millions to the system when he doesn't have to. It's the same game. You're just playing with at, at different levels. Money for you. Chase the money. Chase the money. I can assure you. That's rat racing. Laugh for laugh. You get stuck in the loop. You find a loophole for that. Then you up in the loop. It's tax exempt. You find a white man in the suit. They beat the IRS and we get W's too. Yo, he just said it. I was just talking about that, right? What he said, he said it's tax exempt. You find the right man in a suit, right? The right tax attorney is worth his weight in gold. So many people are like, nah, I do my taxes myself, H&R Block. 
I do my taxes myself, Jackson Hewitt. Some of you are still walking into Walmart with your W-2s trying to sit down with a dude. Bro, the right tax attorney, he might charge 500 bucks, $1,000, but he knows the ins and outs of tax law. You know, I, I was reading something the other day uh, that said uh, a lot of artists, you, you, know, you see a lot of artists that are going for these G-Wagons, right, and such. G-Wagon, excellent truck. But did you know that because of the weight of the vehicle, they can write off the um, uh, the loss in value of the vehicle, not at the end of its life, but up front? So you buy something like a G-Wagon, and because of its weight, you're able to use it different. That's having tax knowledge, right? That's knowing the system and saying, asking what type of car someone drives. Not because you're just a nosy motherfucker. It's because you know that there's implication. Do you have an LLC? How do you pay your taxes? Do you do a W-9? How do you make money? How many W-2s do you have? Where do you live? Right? The, the, the mofo working at Walmart doing taxes ain't going to do all that. You could get pay $100 for a course and be certified to do taxes at Walmart or Jackson Hewitt at H&R Block. It's not that much more going to a tax attorney. There's a lot of attorneys that will do this type of work, and they're, they're, they're extremely knowledgeable. And what I love, <clears throat> when I work with a tax attorney, I give them hypothetical situations. They might not be able to lie, but they can. you can give them situations, and they can help you determine the better way of filing. Talk to a tax attorney. It's tax exempt. You find the right man in the suit. They beat the, find the right dude. They, they beat the IRS and we're getting W-2s, right? We're paying hundreds, if not thousands in taxes. There's a lot of people making killer money and not paying anything in taxes. Why? Listen, it's stacking my Benjamin show him infinite ways. I'm no Christian, but my money saved. Well, Bro. Books, my dog's on the same page. Rich <laughs> A wordplay, right? With that Christian's always trying to save everyone. He ain't Christian, but his money is saved, right? I'm no Christian, but my, my money saved. saved. Welcome in books. My dog's on the same page. Rich dad, poor dad. Once Rich dad, poor dad. That's Robert Kiyosaki, right? That's who we reference uh, in the beginning. He has that uh, board game for cash flow, but he's the famous author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And if you search Rich Dad, Poor Dad... You're going to get some awesome information about ways to build wealth and live your life differently so you can change the future generations in your family. Generational wealth. But my money saved. Welcome <clears throat> in books. My dog's on the same page. Rich dad, poor dad. One generation Yo, away. Before I pimp Benjamin. <laughs> one generation I away. Put my unemployment money in stocks and doubled it. Woo! Short to get paid every two weeks. Niggas lose their life in a second. Now here for the free. Pay attention because talk is cheap. They call it the American dream because you got to be asleep in order to believe in it. Ooh, yo, shout out uh, George Carlin. Uh, the the comedian, uh, yeah, he passed away some years ago. Um, that was one of his famous quotes. He said that he called it the American dream because he got to be asleep in order to believe in it. Sick, sick reference. They call it the American dream because you got to be asleep in order to believe in it. Tanto inmigrante de todas partes just dream of this, of being here. Pero no saben de lo que pasa detrás de la cortina. De todas partes just dream because you got to be asleep. Now, my Spanish isn't the best. I don't speak Spanish, but I understand a lot of it because uh, part of my family was Mexican. Uh, my grandma passed many years ago, but she used to only speak Spanish. I'm Mexican and black. My mom is black. Dad is Mexican. Um, here, let's let her ride here. Uh, in order to believe in it, just dream of this. Both, I think he said both of my, both immigrants or both um, immigrants are from everywhere. Sleep in order to believe in it. Tanto he me granted the toda parte to stream of this of being here. Pero no saben de lo que pasa de la cortina. No te imaginas. But you, uh, they don't know what goes be goes on in the behind the curtains or in the background. Because you gotta be asleep in order to believe in it. Tanto he me granted the toda parte to stream of this of being here. Pero no saben de lo que yeah, they don't know what goes on behind the curtains. You can't even imagine. Stop our babies from turning, uh, what do you say? Strippers and drug dealers, right? So we got to think 
differently, learn something unfamiliar, learn about uh, trading uh, stocks during the day, right? Learning, what did he say? He took his unemployment money and doubled it in the stock game. Do you understand how that works? Do you understand how to open an account, right? These are things that we're not taught in the hood and you might not have a father to teach you these things. Think big on how to get figures, learn something unfamiliar, stop our babies from turning into strippers and drug dealers, give them better than what we had. Generation of wealth is the task. We need change deeper than coins in your couch. Ooh. I'm branching out, I used to keep the roots, family tree. Yeah, that's old money. Keeping money in your socks, putting it in the mattress. Nah, bro, you gotta have that money work for you. The block trade foreign global currencies after more assets and less liabilities. Yo, assets and liabilities. Understand what they are, right? Assets are items that you or your company owns, and they can provide future economic benefit, right? Cash. They create money for you. A liability is something that you owe someone else on, right? And you got to think of it. Assets put money in your pocket. Liabilities take money out, right? And you, you know that game, and then you, you start building assets, right? Like, oh, bitches, I toss, please. Bitch, I'm not a rapper. I'm a global mobile player. Ah, I am not a rapper. Shout out Super Hot Fire. <laughs> In the mouth, like old bitches, I toss, please. Bitch, I'm not a rapper, I'm a global super hot fire. So for flow from here to Alcapoco and California. What is that? What is that? Fuck bitches, get money. Fuck bitches, get money. Woo! Fuck the IRS. Fuck the IRS. Yo, that was sick. Uh, yo, and I'm not even uh, lying on that. This is probably one of my new favorite songs. You guys see the chalkboard in the background. I sit with the teenagers. We got 24-year-old, 21-year-old, 20-year-old, 14-year-old, and 6-year-old. And only the 6-year-old is a girl. Right? So all these teenagers and young adults, we sit here, and I go through on Sundays, and I write out stuff that they need to know. Uh, that the school won't teach them. And man, if you're a fan and you like breaking down lyrics like this and bringing something positive into the hip hop community, man, uh, give us a like, subscribe to the station. We're breaking down uh, some of the more lyrically dense artists and really doing what we can to each one teach one and spread knowledge, man. This was an incredible song. Shout out Coast Contra. Uh, shout out uh, Super Hot Fire. Shout out, uh, you know, a a anybody that that, that I might have missed here. But uh, this is Coast Contra uh, Pimpin' Benjamin. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. We're going to continue to explore Coast Contra and some of their actual songs. This was uh, definitely a gem. Their freestyles are off the charts, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely vibing with the actual song. We'll see you guys on the next video.